in the name of Jesus, we thank you this morning. We bless your name. What a faithful God you are. What a marvelous God you are. Lord, help us as we go into your word this morning. Let it impact our hearts. Let it transform our lives. Let it bring us health and care. Let it reveal your very presence to us. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I said amen. That amen is weak. I said amen. Jesus is Lord. I'm starting a series for this month on growing in the knowledge of God. Growing in the knowledge of God. What it takes to grow in the knowledge of God. This is the first in that series. Growing in the knowledge of God. The Bible has so much to say about growth, particularly growing in the knowledge of God, because everything you are and everything you will be as a child of God depends on it. That you have been in the church for 20 years does not mean you have grown 20 years. And I'm going to be taking my bearing from the book of Peter. That is from, from the words of Apostle Peter. Where he so clearly brings to us the reality of growth. Of spiritual growth. Vis-a-vis -vis the knowledge of God. A bishop will say many people know about God, but only very few people know him. It's sad to say these days, many of us in the church world claim we know him when we don't really know. But let's hear the Bible speak to us. I pray the words of Scripture will minister to you very clearly this morning. I pray that the words of Scripture we come to you. It's, we hear it say, then the word of the Lord came unto me, say, let the word of Scripture come unto you clearly this. First, we saw Apostle Peter gave us a very clear-cut indication on growth as a child of God. First Peter chapter 2, verse 2, he said, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow. And this opens up a very clear chapter that we all know to us. You give birth to a child, he's an infant. There are things you do to that child to commend growth. You cannot feed a child you just gave birth to meat. Do you do that? No, you feed with milk. And God has provided that for us. And here you have Peter saying, as newborn babes, that means when you get born again, no matter your age in this world, you are an infant in God. I start to say many have still remained infant after many years. He said, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word so that you may grow. Desire it. The milk of the word. There is the meat, milk of the word. There is the meat of the world. There is the bread of the world. There is the strong meat of the world. But those are for different levels of growth, just like we know in life. 
So we are called to grow in God. Again, Second Peter chapter three verse eighteen. Please put it up. Apostle Peter writes, is saying, "But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Grow in grace and in the knowledge. That means grow in grace and grow in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ." It's interesting to say that Apostle Peter is passionate about spiritual growth. Paul too talked about it. He said, "Where well, you ought to be teachers, you still need to be taught the elementary principles of the doctrine of Christ because you have not grown. So this is very important. Second Peter chapter one verse one. From Peter chapter one verse one. It says Simon Peter, a servant and an apostle of Jesus Christ. Of them that have obtained, now look, like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Now this clearly shows he's writing this to believers, men and women who have obtained like the kind of faith they have obtained. Like precious faith, he says. And this like precious faith we obtain through the righteousness of God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. It's very important for us to know that because that's where it all begins from. This letter is written to believers who have the same kind of faith as theirs. Precious faith. That means without salvation in Christ, without being born again in Christ, you cannot even begin to begin to talk about growing in the knowledge of God. But what does he want for us? Haven't obtained the like precious faith. Haven't been saved through the righteousness of God and of our Savior Jesus Christ. Verse 2. It says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of our Jesus, our Lord. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Now that you, have, you are saved, now that you are born again, which we are going to expound on further today, he said, and our desire that grace and peace will be multiplied to you. How will that be? It is through the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. That is, as you increase in knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus, grace and peace is multiplied to you. He wants us to have the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus. As we increase in it, grace and peace will be multiplied. Not just added, multiplied. Through the knowledge. How is this going to be? Verse 3. He said, as for this reason, he has given unto us his exceeding precious, verse 3, please. He has given unto us his exceeding precious promises. According as his divine power has given unto us, sorry, all things that pertain unto life and godliness. 
He has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue. Now, he has given unto us all things. And I mean it, all things mean all things that pertains to life. But you keep seeing through the knowledge of him, through the knowledge of God, through the knowledge of him. God is the one who has called us to glory and virtue. So he is the one who has given us all things through the knowledge of him. Through the knowledge of him, he has given us all things. All things to make us be who we are to be in him. All things to make us to be who we are to be in life. All things to make us to be the ultimate of our design in God. He has given us. Now listen to the language of scripture. Not that he is going to give what he has given. If I could just jump down to verse 8 of the same chapter. For if these things be in you, that means the things that we will still talk about later, and abound, they make you that you shall neither be barren nor fruitful in the knowledge. So that's my focus, but I just wanted to see there is how we acquire this knowledge and grow in this. Glory to God. And when I'm talking of the knowledge of God, I'm talking of the true knowledge of God. Not the perceived ones. Authentic knowledge. Many of us quote scriptures that we don't even know. And we say we know them because we can quote them. So it's not about how many verses you can quote. It's not about how many times you shout in Jesus' name. <laughs> It's not about how many reference of God you make. It's about gaining and growing in the authentic experience of the knowledge of God. That is to say, those things you are quoting, you are practically experienced and you are living by. And it says, we can attain unto this height through the righteousness and knowledge of God and of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So you grow in knowledge. You know, that's why the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So when you say you know a truth, but you are not free by it, you don't know it yet. It's not caught in it that makes you know it. It's experiencing it because said, by their fruits you shall know them. He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you and unto me through the knowledge of God. That is for more, that is for more grace and more peace in our lives. We have to have an increase. We have to be growing in the knowledge of God. In other words, no increase in the knowledge of God, no grace manifested. Grace is all that God gives through what Jesus has done. We call it unmerited favor. That is to say, if you want more favor, therefore, you have to have increase, a greater knowledge of God. If you want more calm, that is peace. Peace is the ability to be calm, no matter how chaotic the situation is. And if you want more of this peace in the midst of the storms of life, then you need the authentic knowledge of God. That's why the Bible says the people that do know their God, they shall be strong and they shall do exploits. That we keep in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in you. That man whose mind is established with the knowledge of you, you keep in perfect peace. Amen. Glory to God. 
knowledge, the knowledge of God. If you want grace to be multiplied and not just added, if you want peace to be multiplied, then go for the abundance of knowledge. Glory to God. And that's what the Bible says too, even through our giving, which is very important. He said, God is able to make all grace abound so that you may have all sufficiency in all things. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. That's what God makes available. The grace of God, like my bishop would say, the grace of God that makes the journey great. The grace of God that makes things work. Paul says, I am what I am by the grace of God. That's all that God gives. The grace of God. May that grace attend to you this morning. God is able to make all grace abound to you. So you're giving in life. Your offerings, that's what the Bible says, are very important because they connect you also with grace. So when I see people pray, play with their giving, they are offering their tithes. What they don't know is they are missing out on grace. You will not miss out on grace. So you commit yourself to your financial giving. To the cause of the kingdom. He said, Every man, according as he proposes in his heart, so let him be, not grudgingly or of necessity. Because God loves a cheerful giver. And when you give it, God is now able to make all grace abound towards you. That you come to having sufficiency in all things and abound in every good work. God wants us to have multiplied experience with him. But that comes through our knowledge of him and of his son, Jesus Christ. He wants to give us great experiences of him. That's why you can come to a point where you say, like Paul said, I know him in whom I have believed. I know him. And I know he's able to, you know, bring to pass, or take care, or take charge, or whatever is committed to his hand until the very day I know him. All those comes through the experience of God's manifestation. We are back to Second Peter chapter 1, where in verse 3, he said, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. So we see that his divine power is granting us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. But all that comes through the real knowledge of him. That's why I talk of growing in the knowledge of God. Listen to me this morning, God's people. Everything you need to become what you are meant to be by God, you already have. Because the Bible says he has already given us all things. Has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. And like I said, not that he is going to give, but he has given it. It's sad to say today, most of us are looking for what we, are, what we already own. <laughs> we are looking for what we already own in God. Because we lack the knowledge of God. There is a story of a great publisher who was looking for a particular exclusive painting. And was not able to find it. So he sent people all over his staff the world to seek that painting out. And they came back and said, sorry, we can't find it. But then his cleaner went into his basement where he has kept some things, paintings and other things that he has forgotten. 
and found the particular painting there. So what he has in his basement that he sends people to go and look for all over the world, he has with him already. Some of us are looking for life. But I'm glad to let you know this morning in Christ Jesus, you already have it. Some of us are looking for how to be more Christianly. Well, you already have it. Some of us are looking for how to be more like God, how to be more righteous. But you're not ever going to be more righteous than you are now because he has already clothed you with his righteousness. You already have it. The Bible says everything that pertains to life and godliness, God has granted you by his divine power. Can I hear you say I have everything or all things? I say, can I hear you say I have all things that pertains to life and godliness? Amen. Glory to God. Everything you need, everything I need to meet all of life's demands in a way that will be pleasing to God, we already have. If you are in Christ Jesus, everything you need to meet all the demands of life, you already have. But the problem is, if you don't know you have it, then you don't know where to get it from. If you have something in your house, number one, you don't even know it's there. You don't know you have it. You forgot it. But it's there and you need it. You don't know where to pick it from. So you go out of town, right? Searching for it all over the place. And somebody said, what are you looking for? He said, but you have it in your house. He said, you mean it? And you go to the house, you'll find it there. God has provided it all in Christ. That's why he said, he has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. Listen to this. That's a little baby there that is jumping all over the place. Now, you are not more of a woman than she is in nature, right? But she can't do what you can do. You get my point? Because you have grown. That's what we are talking about. But fundamentally, as a human being, you are not more of a human being than she is. Are you? No. I am not more of a human being than she is. But I can do more than she can because I have grown. That's what we are talking about. At the moment of conception, in the womb of a woman, life is given. Life is not given when the child is born. The, the child is alive even in the womb, right? Life comes. But the problem is that life is undeveloped life. Amen? It's undeveloped life. Everything the baby is ever going to be is already in that baby, right? In, a, in his or her DNA is already there. How she's going to look, how he's going to speak, how he's going to be this, is already there. You do have to go looking for, particularly look at it, a woman's egg is fertilized. You don't look for eyes to put in the egg, right? You don't look for hands. They are all in it. And they all go out. Because even though you can see it, it is built into it. That's the mystery of God. You remember, even Ecclesiastes tells us, as thou do not know how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child. That's the way of God. It's there. The conception supplies life in the embryonic form. And everything life is going to need to be alive is there.
Glory to God. That means in conception, it is loaded with potential to be developed. The only thing that stops you from knowing whether it's is this or that is development. The lack of development is what makes us think everything is not there. But they're there. The fact of development brings out everything that was deposited at conception. How tall you will be is already there. You can't take yourself to an hospital today, they should stretch you so that you can be taller. How short, like some of you are short. <laughs> You can't fight it. It's already there. Glory to God. But development is key. I don't know what you're looking for, but I can tell you it's already there. Peace is already there. It's the Prince of Peace. Power is already there. Your future already secured in him. Purpose determined from the beginning. But where I, the question many will be asking me, Pastor, you are talking too much grammar. You say, I have all these things. So what's wrong with me? Why can't I find them? Why am I not manifesting them? If I have all these things. Where are they? Well, they are there. The problem is you are not looking in the place where they are. The things we are looking for, the things I am looking for, the things you are looking for that pertains to life, that is being able to undo and address the issues of life in a way that pleases God, are already granted by his divine power. That's why you remember John chapter 1 verse 12. The Bible says, to as many as received him, to them gave you power to become the sons of God. John chapter 1 verse 12. For example, this is an equipment. It's a microphone with this that I'm talking with. When you buy it, John 1 12. When you buy it, right? You buy some equipment and particularly power equipment. They can tell you batteries included or batteries not included, right? Because you know, however good the equipment is, you need power to run it. And God is telling you, in your own case, your batteries are included. Because according as his divine power, he says, you have all things. I have given you everything to leave. And my power to run it is there. Therefore, to as many as received him, that's why he gives power. That's the battery to run the equipment. He gives power to become the sons of God, to operate as sons of God, to manifest as sons of God, to do in their dealings as sons of God. So the power to run it is there. The power to run it is there. Hallelujah. Everything you need to become all God wants you to be, you already have. But you may not know how you have it because you don't know where to look for. All the power to use it is given. Can I hear you say amen to that? I didn't hear. I said, can I hear? Good. If you are saved in Christ Jesus, you have the power to live as God will have you live. To as many as received him, to them gave he power. To run that system. 
to run your human equipment, to run your spiritual equipment. He has given you power. The question is, how can I find all these things that I already have? And we are back to Second Peter chapter 1. We stopped at verse 3 before. Now let's go to verse 4. We are by, for this reason, he said. Now let, let me start rephrasing it. You go to Second Peter 1, 4, but let me start rephrasing it. First he said, I'm talking to you people of like precious faith. That means those of you who are saved, who are in Christ, who have received Jesus as your Lord and Savior, who are born again. He said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through our Lord Jesus, uh, through God, the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. You need the grace to operate. You need the calmness of heart to allow God to do his work. He said, according as he has given unto us everything, all things that pertain unto life and godliness, according as his divine power, he has given us that. So we have everything. But then he now said, for this reason whereby, he also gives us, I say Second Peter 1, 4. For this reason, he also gives us his exceeding great and precious promises. Did you sleep in the night? Exceeding great and precious promises he gives us. His word. That's the reason he gives us his word. Because we know him by his word. For the Lord revealed himself unto Samuel by the word. We know God by his word. So the knowledge of God you are going to gain is going to be by the word of God. For this reason, he has given us exceeding great and precious promises. That by his word, by these great and exceeding precious promises, we become, now look at it, he's introducing something again. We become partakers of his divine nature. We've heard of his power. Now he says, as you now go into his word, as you begin to dwell on his word, and in dwelling on his word, you begin to increase in the knowledge of him. And the more you dwell on his word, the more you increase in the knowledge of him. And through this, you are able to partake, partake, of his divine nature. That is huge. That is really huge. The divine nature, the nature of God. I haven't escaped the corruption that is in the world through loss. So he has granted us his precious exceeding great and precious promises so that by them we become partakers. So as we gain and increase in the knowledge of the world and of God, we become partakers of the divine nature. We partake. That means we begin to be part and operators of divine nature. We have divine nature embedded, manifested in our human him afraid. All he intends us to be is in his divine nature. Listen to this. Your nature is your essential disposition. Your core being. That's who you are. Now I'm going to explain this for the next week. I'd like to stop here today. I will explain it further next week because if I enter into it, we will be stopping halfway. But you have divine nature and divine nature manifests through the increase of the knowledge of God by his word. So you begin to gain knowledge and grow in grace. You begin to gain the knowledge of God and grow in peace. You begin to grow in the knowledge of God and divine nature becomes entrenched, manifesting in. You can kill divine nature. Sickness can overwhelm divine nature. Divine nature can't fail. 
So you see, you are not able to begin to manifest as a child of God. The power of God running the system, the nature of God entrenching you, manifested. You see all things. You know all things. <laughs> you see the Lord Jesus Christ manifesting divine nature. Everything became subject to him. Now your full essence begins to manifest as a child of God. The Bible says for the old creature waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. So you begin to manifest your sonship of, of heaven in power, in glory, in honor, with great repute. Righteousness flows like the streams of life. And people see, oh, he's changed. He's changed. He's changed. He's full of power. He's changed. He has granted us all this. So when you say you are a child of God, but you don't give attention to reading like Paul says, you don't search his word, you don't study enough to begin to grow in the knowledge of God and of his word and of his son Jesus Christ, who are not really growing. Divine nature is there but cannot manifest. The equipment, your human frame is not functioning well. That's what we are talking about. Growing in the knowledge of God. That's what it brings. That's what it infers on you. That's what it declares to you. That's what it makes happen for you. Then what we call the miracles of today becomes your natural habitat. Because divine nature is in operation. There's a story of an apostle of God in South Africa many years was a medical doctor and he was working in the hospital in the time of a plague and people who have this plague, they foam in their mouths and even that foam carries the virus so if that foam should touch skin they get infected and he had they saw this man where a lot of medical professionals have strapped themselves up, you know he's just walking, many have died and they say, are you not afraid of these things? He said, <laughs> he said, in actual fact, it's the virus that should be afraid of me. And they said, what are you talking about? Who do you think you are? And he said, I'll, I'll show you something. And he removed his gloves and put his hand under uh, a microscope. And they put a part of those foam. When you look at it under the microscope, you see the virus is gyrating. You know, it's enlarged image. And he said they should put it on his hand. And you know, that's if you don't know what you are doing, that's like this, right? And when they put it on his own hand and put it under the microphone, the viruses were dead. That means he's, instead of the, 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 the virus infecting him, do you understand me? The nature of God in him that he has developed by Affected the virus. Where is she running to? Affected the virus. So we see many things killing us today where we should be killing it with the influence of divine nature. Glory to God. We will no longer be subjected to the humiliation of the devil. Glory to God. We're going to continue this teaching by the grace of God next week. Growing in the knowledge of God. And as you grow in the knowledge of God, your maturity begins to show. You begin to accomplish great things. You will accomplish great things. Let's rise up on our feet as we thank God for his word today. Let's thank God for his word. Faithful worthy. Let's thank God for his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I need you to pray right now. Lord, the Bible says to as many as received him, to them give you power. I've received. I have this power at work. Lord of heaven, let your power continually flow through my being. 
Let your power continually flow through my being. I submit myself to your will. Anoint my mind to be able to conceive your word. Give me the appetite for your word. And as I stay on your word, light and understanding wake up. I will be able to stand in my place, manifesting divine nature. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Blessed be your name. This is the beginning of a new year. And it's important that you align yourself with God and set the path for your growth so that you can do and accomplish great things with God. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for your word today. Thank you for the reality of life and understanding. Lord, let every contrary force to the growth of your people in knowledge, let it be destroyed here today. Let that veil of covering be broken through, that we may gain access to the light of the world. I curse the yoke of ignorance in the name of Jesus. Lord, let every contrary force or effect to the manifestation of divine nature in us be destroyed this morning. I curse sickness and infirmity in the lives of all these ones hearing me this morning. That old of sickle cell I decreed broken off this morning by the nature of God, that divine nature. I had that just now. That hold of sickle cell, you are broken in the name of Jesus. I has that the nature of God flows into that body, even as it is, overwhelming every virus, every cell of that sickle cell and reverse it and turn it. He said, I'll be it, the Lord that God turned the curse into a blessing. So all the cells, whatever they be of sickle cell, be turned, be turned and overturned this morning in that body into a magnificent genotype to the glory of God. Divine nature does that. I see divine nature doing that right now. I see him destroying that. I see him bringing to life. The superior ones. By the blood of Jesus. I see the blood of Jesus flowing through your system. And making it whole. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. I say glory to God. Thank you Lord of heaven. For you have made all things well. You have perfected all things. For us. We give you glory. You have healed our infirmities. Made all things well. Thank you, Lord. Every infirmity of the flesh, contrary to the whole and manifestation of divine nature in you, I curse it this morning in the name of Jesus. Speak life into you because you have it. Flowing from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet, I speak life into your mind and your mind. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Please take your seats. Hallelujah. Very quickly, we're going to honor God with our tithes and offering. And I want to say something specific. This is a new year. I was teaching in the morning devotion on Friday. And it was so strong in my lips, but I just couldn't tell the people. That you seal your way before he comes of this year with a sacrifice to God for 2024. And I think I may get a boldness. To, to, I, I, I'm saying it here for you. Let those who will receive it, receive it. Because this is how we go with God. <laughs> you say, I have this to do. I have that to do. Okay. How much can you do of yourself? Rise up in faith and take that sacrifice this week. And say, Lord, I seal my way with you this year, 2024, with this sacrifice. 
And I'm not saying it lightly. It was so strong in my lips, but sometimes the way some of you look, you don't let us say it clearly. They think it's about money. It's not about money. It's what the Lord demands. It's what the Lord demands. And as God has demanded it, nobody is forcing you. You respond. And when you respond, you begin to see. Say, Lord, this 2024, I am entering into it with my sacrifice to seal it with him. I will not see. And all the things you want, you declare it with that sacrifice. You declare it with that sacrifice. And if you can, you, you text me, those of you online, those of you here, you write it, bring it next Sunday, and we'll pray over it. But we're not praying over what you have not sacrificed for. Glory to God. Now let's honor the Lord with our tithes and offering right now. Those of you online, you know what to do. We have the information for your electronic giving.